computer, change our view. All right, so um, I have Tom Walsh and Patrick Williard. Patrick, sorry, Patrick. I'm terrible with names. I'm good with faces and cars, but not people. And I'm a product person, not a people person. So we, I, I, if you haven't watched the video prior to this, it might make sense if you're watching now is to go back and watch my video on my initial um, um, construction of the car. But I wanted to get Tom and Patrick on so we can go through every, you know, every line by line detail, make sure I'm specking it out properly. Um, this, of course, would be the normal process. If you were a normal person, you would go to the dealer, you would sit with guys, with guys like Tom and Patrick, and they would help you figure out how to spec it. Me, I'm stubborn and like to do everything myself. So that's why I, uh, I like to do it wrong and then you know, have guys like this come in and help me do it right. <laughs> So let me share my screen with you guys here, and we're going to kind of walk through uh, the detail of what options we're going to choose. Okay. So first question, is it Gentian or Gentian? We've been told by Porsche it is Gentian Blue. Yeah. Gentian? Gentian. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's what I was pronouncing it at first. And then I heard, you know, quite a few people, and you never trust anybody on YouTube, especially someone like me. But everybody yeah. was Gentian, so I thought it was Gentian. I changed my pronunciation, but I, 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 other people have commented on the video and said it's Gentian, J-E-N-T-I-N, Gentian Blue. So I'll change my nomenclature to that, and we'll pronounce it correctly from here on out. So sorry to the, to the, to the people that are It was confirmed to us at the 992 launch last summer, so... Got they it. had a couple of cars there. We made sure we uh, we had it right when we were saying. So we already helped the world a little bit here today. So show Gentian Blue. Um, you guys, cool color to you. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, I was hoping Miami Blue, but, you know, Gentian Blue is pretty good. And I'm not a girl or a baby, so I don't <laughs> want some baby blue crap on my car. Well, that's okay. Gentian will look good cleaned what's, up. What, what is it with dudes and baby blue? I don't understand. I'm not sure, but uh, we you seem to love it. Of it. I got a lot of clients that love the Miami Blues. Oh, I know, I know, I know. That and is, that. I love the color. It's a great color. Okay. Good. So, you did, okay. so I'm not doing, not doing some baby bull crap. But um, the yeah. other colors, the other colors I was considering was, uh, you know, obviously white. But you know, I have the white RS already. Uh, sure. Red. I, I do want a red car in my life at some point again. You know, my AP, AP1S2000 was red, new formula red. You know, GT Silver is always a good, solid, safe choice. What do you guys think about chalk? I, I'm not a huge oh, fan. Oh, here we go. He, this guy hates it. He said it's not a color. It's not a color. It is a color. It's gorgeous. I love it. The I thing I don't it. like about it in person, it has a tanness to it. That it's a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I can I'm appreciate that. Fan. It's still just not my jam. Yeah. I love yeah. the blue. Though. Same here. Yeah, I think Jensen Blue, because we don't have a, uh, a paint to sample option on these cars currently, is correct. Is probably the, the best color because it's going to be a little bit, not everybody's going to be going with that. You're going to see a lot of whites, blacks, right. racing yellows, uh, and guards red as we typically do. But I don't, I think Jensen Blue is going to be a lesser option color for most right. people. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, well, that's we're going to make that car special. We're going, to change, we're going to change that a little bit when I have photos and videos all over the darn place. So right. I, like, I like to think I have a small part in the um, in the reason why Sapphire Blue became so widely um, subscribed to, but um, I don't know. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, you guys are at the Porsche of Wilmington in North Carolina. Correct. Uh, and so um, I know you don't have GT4 allocations coming out the rear, but uh, you certainly can get people Cayennes and every other car you uh, if they need it right yeah yeah and, and we uh again we're open to having conversations and um sure. it's uh it's it's porsche's uh idea to to keep those uh allocations limited so um we we get what we get and we we've done fairly well in the gt market right. since we've been here we're a new fairly new point about three years old now one of the things that I, you know, I'm sure there are some people that think it, uh, only a few people comment it, but you know, of course, this is a rather tumultuous time in, in existence in our country and world. And here I am specking out a rather frivolous but very expensive car. Uh, I think I think I want to clarify to people, I've been trying to get a GT4 allocation or GT3 allocation for seven years. 
you know, I'm a, one of the probably one of the world's biggest Porsche fans, and uh, certainly have been a huge advocate for the product. I love the cars. I love the company, and and I haven't been able to buy a car. And you know, Tom and I, you remember you were talking. I was talking about this. Man, I'm really not ready for this car. Um, I had the Corvette at the time, and I had the M5 at the time, and so I've, I I escalated my plan to get rid of those so I can make room in my my life because I'm I'm not very good at having too many cars, and so I want to clarify with people that you know this is like a, a once in a lifetime thing. You know, not everybody gets GT4 allocations, and I have one, and so I'm I'm, I'm taking the opportunity. Plus, remember, cars are my business, cars are my life, and cars are what make my business work. Uh, and so I get it that um, that you know some people are out of a job, but without this, without me doing stuff like this, I'd be out of a job too. So um, without uh, customers like you, we'd be out of a job too. So, exactly. so, <laughs> so cars are our lives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, th I think it's important that I, I people understand. I get it. I understand. Uh, I I feel very fortunate to be able to do this. I very very fortunate to have access to guys like you um, that can help me think through this. And then, you know, of course, when the car comes, it'll be just a fantastic day. So anyway, yeah. back to the back to the, 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 right. the car. So wheels, I'm planning to do, I think the darker gentian color, um, I think does best with platinum. So, I mean, I'm, you can't yeah. go wrong with wheels. Um, the black looks great. The, you know, the bronze would be cool too. But I just like, I think platinum satin on the, you know, the dark blue just makes sense to me. We agree there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we'll go with that. Cool. cool. Now, interior, uh, I'm not a huge uh, deviated stitching guy. Some For some reason, green was so cool to me, so I did green on my GD3 RS, um, but doing red or yellow stitching, and it was a really popular option. I'm really pleased that Porsche is now giving us that option much easier than they did in the past, so it was such a difficult thing mm -hmm. to be able to choose colors. But I love silver, you know, the silver stitching, full leather option. I think, you know, you're already 100K into this car, you know, to, to add in another and add in another few bucks to, uh, to, to you know, get, get full leather, I think, makes a lot of sense to me. Leather Dash makes a car just pop inside, and especially when you get deviated stitching. It's, uh, you have people that will buy a stock car with a full leather dash over a car without it just because it feels more special inside every single time. Yeah, yeah. You gotta make the car stand out a little bit. And that yeah, agreed. I'm trying to figure out where I wanna put you guys on the screen so that it looks good. Okay, we'll put you in upper left. <laughs> All right, so uh, next, uh, next question is um, seats. So I called you, Tom, chickening out. Um, I was pretty adamant about this that I was going to do uh, sports seat plus I don't buy things for the next guy. I right. Give, I don't give a crap what you want. I'll find somebody to buy it. Um, and, and so I'm buying the car for me. Now I may, you know, I may do a giveaway on a GT car someday, something, you know, at some point, but the plan is to buy this car and I'm going to have it for however long I have it, enjoy it, uh, you know, love it. And, um, and one of the things I've been considering is this is a manual car. It is a two seater, but I drive everywhere by myself. And so I would make this my day to day. This is the car I jump in first. Correct. Uh, and so it's a pain in the butt to get it in and out of full buckets. Correct. Uh, I'm not a big 18 way fan. It's just too many options. It messes me up. Right. I don't, I know that it's the automatic checkbox and I know it will disqualify a lot of people. They think they need 18 way. Uh, I think that people underestimate how good the two way seats are. Yeah, two-way seats have been, I mean, most of the GT cars that we've had in here pre-owned have had the standard sports seat plus, and um, I can say they're 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 comfortable, and they do everything you need them to do. 18 ways, yeah, they're, um, they're snug. They're, they're snug. another what? It's another roughly 30, 35 pounds to add to the car when you do the 18 for the control module and... Roughly. So, but now I could lose that weight you know but the uh on my body oh. I'm just <laughs> let's, let's be honest there we get all <laughs> but i chose to do i said you know I, I spent all this time like on my m3 and my civic that i have sitting in front of me here chasing down looking for better you know the best seats so you can do i mean this is a fourteen thousand dollar seat that you're able to option out for six thousand bucks correct 
So and you can still buy rails and sports seats right. if you got into this car and decided that that wasn't going to be comfortable enough every day. Right. It would still be less money than if you had to buy the buckets after the fact. Right. Now I I love this is another common misconception with uh, with the sport buckets the 918 inspired sport buckets they are ridiculously comfortable like you get in them they're a ride 10 hours in the car seat to me I don't know about you guys but the hard the, the only frustrating part is getting in and out you have to you have to know how to do it there's a procedure you know? correct it's just annoying getting in and out yeah there's nothing worse than like. I get in the car, I back out. I'm like, oh crap! I forgot my lunchbox on the table. I gotta, we, you know, wiggle back out of the darn thing. But that minor annoyance for how fantastic they look, how much value they add to the car, and you know, they lighten up the car, and they're fantastic to sit in. You know, they're just they're great. Yeah, once you're in, you're in, and they have a perfect. I I finally have one of the better driving positions that I've seen in the car. Um, I have trouble getting certain seats to get to where I'm comfortable and where I know I should sit. Um, but those I've never quite had that problem with. I mean, like I can't fit no matter the GT2 seats the, from the 997 generation. Like I literally float, like my hips don't make it to the bottom yeah, of the seat. Right. You know? But these seats are made for big fat Americans like me. It's great, you know. That's, I mean, my, I have friends that are six, eight, six, nine, that can have a GT car fit in it and drive around in it. Unlike most sports cars are, are much tighter. Right. Right. All right. So let's move on to, um, all of these options here. So this is one of the things I was a little unclear on is that the extended deviated stitching interior package. Can you guys kind of clarify what that would mean? So it just adds more and it shows you here, you know, all the sections where it adds all that deviated stitching. So the dashboard, the upper sections, center console, on down the line, and then it gives you the, the color options below it to pick out if you wanted lizard green or speed yellow. I mean, there's some weird colors in there if you look in there, cognac, I don't know how big. <laughs> Mama green. Mama yeah, green. <laughs> speed blue. Yeah. Still no Miami blue stitching. So, so well, don't I already have that up here with our, you know, with our regular stitching package? I mean, they're stitching on the dash, they're stitching down the center console. You have the GT4 stuff. So the extended version, it does it more? Hmm. Just more areas if you want to go that route. So what do you guys think about that? I think what you've got is, is perfect. I mean, yeah. It would make a lot of sense if you were trying to do a different color, maybe, and get it to stand out a little bit more unique. Like if you were doing lizard green or something like that, it yeah. might make sense. But in the, I mean, don't you think? Yeah, it's yeah. another three grand for stitching in a car that's already got some in there. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I find this to be acceptable the way it's currently spec. I mean, so we, we find times there's acceptable right. times to put more stuff in versus mm -hmm. not. And I mean, it, it's cool. It's very cool. And then you could change that stitching color or whatever you want it to be pretty much. I mean, there's limitations to it, but, um, and they will do stitching pretty much whatever color you want. Um, and that's in our special wish categories, but, uh, those prices are, we've that's seen part of the, that's part of the CXX packaging, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. We, we had a customer request something like that. And, we decided not to because it, was, it would uh, slow up build, you know, the, your allocation times and build times. Oh, absolutely, it will. Yeah, well, a lot of times when you inquire about the pricing on those items, and then when you get the quote back, you almost just fall out of your chair because it's yeah. like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> well, they're saying we'll do it, but we don't really want to do it. Right, exactly. This would be a price that we'll do it at, where it won't be. It it will overcome the annoyance of it. Right. Right. Exactly. So we're going to skip all of this like I'd originally intended. Um, now we'll talk a little bit about the, because uh, I can't select this option without adding in the full package, right? So I can't Correct. just say I would like to have the steering column uh, in leather with deviated stitching unless I choose the deviated stitching package. Correct. So let's go to our exterior options. Obviously, it's a no-brainer. The um, picking the headlight uh, cleaning system 
in um, in you know in the color, the exterior. Uh, it's normally on the GT4. Is it chrome or is it black? You know, I think it's black, like a satin black. Yeah, I think, I think it is black on those. I think it's satin black. I think it was probably what 2016 they they changed to because they used to all be chrome. You know, it was like a bright chrome, and so you had to like unless you love chrome, which you know most people don't now. It, it's one of those things you kind of had to choose, and then and they switched to like a satin, like a matte black. But I think it makes sense to pay the 300 bucks, get it painted, try to make it go away. You know, it's something that it's like a European requirement. If you, un if you unclick it, it'll show you what it looks like. Good call. It's black. It's black. It's it's black. black. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, this color, and I think most people are pretty clear, this is not very accurate. It's a much more metallic looking. Oh, yeah, that's not it's not a good representation. Yeah. So we're going to do that. Um, we're going to we're not going to do it in a deviated color. You know, we don't want to paint it pink or something crazy. Um, I, I I I want the door handles to be the same color as the car, so I wouldn't I wouldn't choose that option. Uh, I do like the option of changing the Porsche logo. I'm not a I'm a badgeless kind of guy, so changing the logo and making it look less you know in your face. So changing that to satin black just makes sense to me. I'm glad they give us that option. Um, I like to get rid of the logo. I'm going to pull that sticker off anyway. So yeah. I like this look. Um, everybody knows a lot of our cars. Yeah. A lot of our cars for stock, um, we debadge them and they basically will just be, we'll do a matte black on the back of our cars and just say Porsche for most of our 911s, what our customers seem to like and uh, kind of gives us a kind of a trademark of something we do here. But your style got it so you guys are on board with that and then you know the regular gas cap is a little goofy looking even though this i wish this was actually aluminum it's actually plastic i'm not a big faux guy but you know it looks way better than the stock one so i clicked that 160 bucks again i'm in it this deep anyway we're 111 thousand bucks what's another 160 right so, so we'll just keep going with that so on the performance, obviously six speed manual. What's the status of the DCT cars? Is that is that later this year? What do you, what do you guys know? When they officially announced this car. They gave like a calendar. You know, this is when the first cars are going to get delivered. And then at the tail end, they said PDK at the tail end, but haven't heard anything official yet. So that or could be next year. That could be late this year. That could be the following year. We're not really sure, right? Yeah, I think it'll happen at some point, but. And then do you guys expect a, a GT4 RS to be PDK only? That's what we expect, but uh, with Porsche, you never know. They don't tell us anything until uh, right. until it's on our uh, internal system, and then we know when pretty much everybody else knows. Yeah, because that's everybody. You know, everybody says, well, why don't you wait for the GT4 RS? With a GT car, you got to get, if you want it even remotely, I got to get what I can get, you know? You can hold on forever. You can put a deposit down 10 years early. It's just not how you got to kind of play the game a little bit, right? I mean, that's kind of how it goes. So um, Sport Chrono, I think that, the, you know, I'm not a big Sport Chrono guy. I don't think I've ever used it, like ever, not one time. Um, but in the GT4, I like how it looks. I like what it does to the, you know, to the dash. It makes it look a little bit nicer. A little less plasticky to me. Um, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think it looks good. Leave it black like you did. Yep. Sharp looking. And then I'm a you know carbon ceramics guy, absolutely. And then a neat feature or a neat option they've given us this year is the option uh, to do it in gloss black for those that don't want to see you know big bright yellow break. Something about blue and yellow to me really works, so I'm going to stay hot boy on this. Um, but it is a really cool option that they give you um, to do to do a black um, a, a black caliper. But I'm not going to choose that. And if you're paying for the brakes, you might as well show them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess. <laughs> so lights, uh, we saw that pop up briefly, um, but uh, the LEDs are such fantastic lights. Um, right. You know, in many ways, the bi-xenon lights are more color accurate, like your you know the color rendering. But the LEDs are more efficient. They look a little bit better. Um, so the LEDs have kind of grown on me over the years and, um, you know, in the beginning of GT cars and, and, you know, you had, they were all chrome in here and now Porsche has kind of gotten wise to everybody wants them to be in a, you know, a darker finish. And so 
I just think that looks fantastic. I mean, both both look good, um, but the you know the LED looks I think next level. They've kind of got that next to them um, with the four squares. It's just it's a very tough look on those lights. Yeah, and I'll tell you when I me personally when I look at one of these new cars from Porsche now, that's the first thing my eyes are drawn to every single time is headlights. What headlights is that car got? And mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of headlights. I think it's very cool some of the new technology i'm here out. man i mean that's why i spent you know a thousand bucks putting new headlights on my civic to change it right. like one shade from like gray to like a little darker gray you know but it, it can really make the car it really makes a big difference to me absolutely so that's 2100 bucks um light design i used to be anti-light design but it is really nice it makes the interior yeah. feel more modern correct yeah, and it used to be a lot more money too yeah, for, yeah, yeah, it did used to be a lot more money, um, but not too bad anymore. And then uh, I'm not, I don't want power folding mirrors, um, specifically from a detailing perspective. For me, I want to be able to yank on the mirrors and manipulate them however I want. Uh, and I'm also not, I like to control my own stuff, so I skip. I'm, I know this is a really popular Porsche option. Most people would check this box. Uh, I'm a bit of a rebel, so I'm going to uncheck it, Any anything I'm missing there that um, you're gonna, you know, cane me if I don't. I don't choose that option. You're a purist. Do it at heart. You know, you want to operate everything. You want to do it yourself. That's. It's not a. It's not a necessity. The biggest thing is that I know you can turn this on on and off, but they. I don't really like a rain sensor. I want to control the wiper blades on my own. Um, right. They work really good sometimes, and sometimes. Right. They don't. Yeah. So now on to interior options. Uh, so uh, you have the option. And so you know, Alcantara gets a really bad rap. Um, Alcantara is actually really, really durable. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know how much of you guys, the stuff that, uh, that I do, you watch, but Alcantara is actually sandable. You can sand it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so one of the things that happens with Alcantara is if you get cheeseburger hands on it too much, it'll start to mat down if you don't clean it properly or you know, reasonably often. Or if you clean it with the wrong thing, uh, what what can happen is is the you know, the fibers will release from the Alcantara and they get create those little balls. So what happens is the Alcantara doesn't release the the, the fibers that have pulled from the, the substrate uh, or the surface that's holding it together, but they don't they don't fall off, but they kind of grab and they mat up. And so one thing you can do with Alcantara, you can't do this a hundred times, but you can do it two or three times, is you can lightly sand it with a very specific sanding block. Uh, and so if you take care of Alcantara, clean it once every six months with a proper procedure, you can sand it, you know, once a year if you had to, to kind of reactivate or get rid of any extra fibers. And it's actually super durable on steering wheels and stuff like that if you know what you're doing. But if you're scared of that, you could choose black leather. Um, I like Alcantara, so I'm going to stick with that. That's such a good feel on it. Yeah, but it is a no cost option that they do give you the option to switch to that if you wanted to. Um, I like the idea of the red top dead center mark. Um, it matches the red in the Porsche logo. It's a little different than yellow, be a little less susceptible to getting dirty or showing dirt as much as yellow will. Um, so that's why I chose red on, on the top dead center mark. It looks good. So tell me a little bit about two zone climate control, because this is where I think I've gone wrong. Um, if you don't check this box, from what I understand on a GT4, then I don't have any kind of auto climate control. That's correct. Correct. No. You change it, fan it up, fan down, all that. I'm all right. Well, you got to change my build then, because I've got to. I'm going to add that. I was thinking, what do I need two zones for? It's a freaking two seater. Uh, right. So I uncheck that box, but then I don't get to set it at 72 degrees and let it do its thing, right? If I don't right. have that. So one of the things, Matt, we're gonna we'll edit that part out. But your your car is locked. It's 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 locked in this morning at like what time did it do it this morning? Yeah. Two o'clock this morning. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then I won't have that. Tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. I mean. It's, we were a little surprised this morning. I, I pulled it up first thing when I rolled in this morning. Well, you warned me ahead of time that um, there's a very good possibility that my car will be locked. Oh, boy. Uh, I, guess, I guess I'll just have to control my own temperature. I think I'll be all right. 
it you you'll be just fine yeah i, I think you'll be okay. but that is one thing that i didn't clarify very well in my build when i made my original build that it wasn't aware of because uh, this is not an option on the on the gt3s or i believe the 911s this is a gt4 option or you know cayman option um, but if you want it to just say it set it at 70 degrees and have it adjust temperature accordingly, you need to choose this option. Correct. Seed heating. Um, you can't do seed heatings with sport buckets, right? Correct. Right, so you can't do that. I didn't clarify that. The smoking package is kind of a no brainer because it adds this. Put it on all, all the cars. Yeah. Just, yeah. Pretty much everything we build has it. Yep. Uh, luggage net, you know, you can take it or leave it, but the luggage net and the footwell is kind of a neat little free thing that they put on there. Um, if it's free, take it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we always tell people. <laughs> I skip. Um, I, I'm going to skip the fire extinguisher. I don't intend to be on the track on this, but this does uh, add a fire extinguisher down here to the to the front seat area. Um, but I'm skipping that. It's and cool then stuff we make. <laughs> <laughs> I try and sell it on everything we get. I offer it to everybody. <laughs> and the thing I don't like about it is my kids step on it. Yeah, yeah, that would yeah, be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So then, interior. I'm uh, sorry, painted interior stuff. I'm not a huge fan of. We're going to do carbon fiber on that. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing with the painted, you know, slats. Uh, right. You can get a little ridiculous with these things, but I do like the um, the seat belts and uh, and silver. Um, correct this yeah. this reminds me a lot of my uh my dot one gt3 uh that uh in two, my 2014 had this kind of finish so mm -hmm. i like it and i found that they really even though they're silver they really don't get dirty i mean seat belts are such tough material yes yes they are <laughs> that's that great the issues um i know it's really really popular to do the dials in a different color but i freaking hate that what do you guys think about that it it, that's really customer choice. If, if somebody wants to build something that's, that's very special to them, um, we we absolutely tell them get what they want. Because again, when you're building these things for you, yep, you don't have to worry about what everybody else thinks. And the same thing goes to you. If you don't if you don't like them, don't get them. Um, they are they're a little bright for some people, um, and the gray that comes on the tachometer from the factory. Is fine, and I don't know a single person that drives one of these cars that actually looks at the dial speedometer on the left hand side. Everybody right, right. looks at that digital display right underneath the tag. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, if you like the gray, we like the gray. Well, um, sometimes we put dials in cars if we're trying to do something a little bit more um, special, but uh, it's not a necessity in these cars, yeah. Yeah, it's a very, I, I like the rag on guys about their, their douchey white dials, but yeah. I'm, I'm joking, half joking there. Half joking, yeah, it's okay. So interior leather, you do have the option to choose. You could make all of this trim leather if you right. wanted to, um, and you could do an ex extended dashboard leather package. Uh, the one thing I also messed up on is that in the, the, the visors, uh, don't automatically come in Alcantara, so you would have needed to choose whether you wanted the visors in leather or you wanted them in Alcantara. Um, so that's something that somebody might want to pay the 590 bucks for. Um, the one thing that I do like uh, is, and I believe I checked this option, was to do the steering column casing in leather. Yeah, correct. Uh, it's a nice little thing. This is one of those areas, every time I get in the car, I just naturally tend to wipe it with my hand. Right. Uh, and you know the plastic it just looks nice to have that in leather um, somebody had mentioned in a YouTube comment that choosing this still has stitching can you guys clarify that do you know is there stitching on that piece there is stitching. there is stitching it's like a two I believe it's two pieces that wrap that and I believe it's stitched on the sides mm -hmm. um, I'll have to double check it we might have a, mm, I don't know if I've got a car with it right now but um, I've got a customer yeah, with it. Because there's this seam right here. Right. And then there's a seam on the sides. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the question is whether this will have gray stitching or not. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Probably have black. I think it would probably have black stitching there. That's what I thought. Somebody had suggested otherwise. Uh, I thought in order to make that gray stitching, you would have had to go back up here to the, you know, to this section and added your extended stitching stuff for, for that. For right. That. 
Okay, so I did choose that option. All these other options, like the I want to see the backs of the you know, of the seats. Um, I want to see, although that would be for this this the sport seats, not the the um right. the the sport buckets. You know, the manual is going to come out of the car and go in a file anyway, so I won't be doing that. And the uh, door guards, I you know, I don't do any of that stuff in leather. So all these, there's all gotta these be some weight savings when you don't put all that leather in there too, right? <laughs> I love it that they give us the option, though. You know, yeah, more options the better. And if uh, you if you spec out like a, a Turbo S, you, there's more stuff that you can cover in oh, leather. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's wild. So the you could again you could do the dashboard and door trim stuff. You could change this stuff to Alcantara if you wanted to. Um, again, this is an option uh, I probably would have checked, which would have been the sun visors in Alcantara, but whatever. I you know I touch those once every 16 drives, and I'm driving. Right. Usually, I don't use them because I usually tint the windshield anyway. Um, so, you know, the, the roof the roof on our GT4 is that Alcantara or is it um, fabric? You know, that's a good question. Does it give you the option for? An Alcantara headliner, it does. It is Alcantara. I think it's Alcantara. Otherwise, it would give you the option for reflining in Alcantara. Yeah, so I think um, it would make sense to have Alcantara sun visor. So I think most people should probably check that box. But you know, look, you guys saved me by my car getting locked. I saved myself, uh, you know, fifteen hundred bucks or uh, twelve hundred bucks <laughs> already today. So that's good. Uh, interior carbon fiber. Now this is the one I did choose. So you have leather. Alcantara, stainless, or carbon fiber. So you have four options I chose to do, and you choose this one because we chose full leather. I chose right. 790 bucks to change this all, this here, the surround around the, you know, around the shifting area, center console, uh, and then the door trim here all goes to Alcantara. I'm sorry, carbon fiber. Correct. It looks okay. great. What do you guys think about the, um, the carbon fiber floor mats? What are those like? They're cool looking. I've seen them. They're cool looking. Yeah, they're um, it's almost like a rubberized right. carbon fiber. Um, it's definitely different. Uh, I can't say it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's, it's just another option. Yeah. Sure. I don't know what floor mats you plan on running in there, but a um, thousand bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So here's my. This is my, and, and I get ragged on this all the time. Usually by weird old dudes. Um, but the aluminum pedals, I think are the most fantastic thing ever. I think they look super clean. They're, Absolutely. they're insanely grippy. Uh, yes. awesome. Um, they're way grippier than the, than the rubber pedals. You would think, you would think that the, you know, you would think when you think aluminum, you think shiny and soft, you know, or, or at least, you know, with a grain, but these have a, it's almost like a grip tape that where they, they texture the pedal. It's just. Right. I just think they're freaking fantastic for 500 bucks. Yeah. Um, and they're not easy to do after the fact. Right. And almost every GT car comes with those. I think your point one car probably had those. Um, my dot one RS didn't have those and I wanted a retrofit. Oh, really? It was a big pain in the butt. Okay. Yeah. I would have never optioned it. I would have thought it looked stupid. I would have thought it was a bad option or a bad idea, a waste of money. But my first car, my 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 dot one GT3, you know, I bought it. It was a stop sale car and showed up. And then, you know, all the salesmen got on the phone and called everybody. And I was the first one to show up and get it. Um, that car, the guy had spec the aluminum pedals. And ever since then, I've been adamant. They're so good. They're so nice. They're so grippy. It looks great in person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in pictures and in the configurator, I, I understand how people could think it looks a little gaudy, a little weird. Uh, but in person, I don't know about you guys, but I think it looks great. Yeah, they look awesome. We're big fans, yeah. And then I didn't choose to do any of the the illuminated door sill stuff. I know that's pretty popular for people to do, but you could you could have done OG spec on the door on the. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm a take the logo off kind of guy, not put it on, and yet I wear you know, a logo shirt every day for some reason. For some reason, it's okay on shirts, but not on cars for me. I. I don't have any justification for that, but that's just the way it is. Um, and then audio, I did cho choose, even though Bose sucks. Could you imagine if they gave us the option for Burmester? It'd be the darn perfect vehicle. <laughs> uh, 
you know, the Burmester is one of the best, uh, one of my favorite factory sourced stereos because it's very simple. You know, it's a front stage with the subwoofer up in the dash, a you know, pretty decent little amplifier. Um, and, and you allow you to play DVD audio disc and things like that. Um, but unfortunately in GT cars, Proninger doesn't like the idea of having that kind of thing in it. Correct. If you guys have any say, make that happen. It would be so good. Yeah. I think it's a weight, it's a weight thing, probably. <laughs> I would assume. I'm pretty uh, sure uh, that some guy weighed it back in the day that the Burmester system is actually lighter than the regular system, but I may that'd probably be true. <laughs> no one, no one them. So then um, the uh, I did add Apple CarPlay because I'm an Apple user. Um, kind of an odd thing you have to add, but I did add that. And then I'm not a, I don't really like navigation because we all use our phones. The, you know, the Porsche navigation is decent, but I mean, it's hard to beat Google Maps, you know, so. Exactly. So I left that out. And then because I'm going to come enjoy the great state of North Carolina, um, I skipped on the, uh, on the delivery center experience. I've been there a bunch anyway. Um, and so what we're going to do is fly up and, you know, take delivery of the car and then have my guy, you know, come and come and pick it up. I was hoping, um, um, for those watching that we can do a, uh, little, uh, the little meetup with a bunch of OGs come out, you know, get to see the dealership and, you know, see the car and all that stuff. That'd be great. So the build is 125, 590 minus the two things that mine locked without those two. So go back to the previous video. Uh, and, um, and that's the car. So what do you, what do you think? Is this, Am I missing anything? What 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 am I? What should I change? What do you guys think I should do? Fire extinguisher. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I should have added. <laughs> well, so he had added the other parts that we we couldn't oh, add okay. in because of the car locked. So yeah. Now, I mean, with no, with the GT great. cars, there's only so much you can do. Right. Um, and again, you see all the options that you didn't pick. So there's a tons of there's still tons of stuff that we could have done, but uh, I. I mean, when I looked over the build the first time, Patrick and I talked about it. We were like, "Yeah, this is perfect. this is this is what we hope every build looks like," um, because there are times where stores will build a car for their own dealership. Um, they don't have a buyer, or they plan on bringing that vehicle in and then trying to market it to the general public. And um, they sit down, they build it real quick, and they miss some things. And uh, one of the things that we focus on here is that. We both talk about each build and we say, you know, did we get this? Did we get that? Did we get a heated steering wheel? Did we not get a heated steering wheel on certain cars? So um, to be able to sit down and be able to do this with you and, and with all our ordered clients, um, it's it's not typically uh, Porsche fashion and, other, and, and car sales in general, but him and I both jump in when our customers are kind of finalizing their build and we just kind of go over it and, you know, we might come up with one suggestion or two suggestions and say, hey, did you, I didn't see it on here and it's, that's cool if you don't want it. Right. We just think that this might be something to look at. So, um, and make sure you know the same thing. Yeah, you got to be careful when you interject your opinion. You don't want to, you still, it's their car. So, you, you know. I'd be a terrible car salesman because I would be like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay, you know. Uh, you stupid! You're buying his baby blue. Let's get a man car, you baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a good thing I'm not uh, not doing what you guys do. I'd be a uh, hack all the whole time. And we got to be careful, but in the same sense, you know, right. there there are times when we tell people you 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 can't you can't do that. Yeah. So explain. Um, let's let's drop the screen share so we can bring you guys in here. Um, what um what do i expect now so what is the status called when it goes lock is what is that called v something v250 yeah so v250 it's it's vehicle fixed so right now they're ordering all the parts for the car mm -hmm. and then once they get all the parts headed to the factory they'll start to paint it it'll go down the assembly line and they'll go to 260 will be the next status and their status is inside right. 260, but we're mostly concerned with 250, 260, 200. and 300, and 300 right now. So 300 would be production complete, and mm -hmm. and then headed over to the exit port to be put on the vessel. 
And Porsche doesn't have a tracker where I can, as a customer, can go in. I, I have to follow up with you guys, and you kind of keep me up to date. You know, like BMW has the tracker where you can go in and you know kind of click on. It doesn't tell you a lot, but you can kind of click on it. it doesn't tell you much anymore, for sure. We we do BMWs here as well, and uh, the BMW trackers kind of they build them in like a day now, so there's no so you know it's going along the process. So, um, but this car. You know, whatever you want to know throughout the process, and we'll give you updates as as it comes along. So once it goes 260, we'll say, hey, it went 260. It's now on the assembly line being put together. When it goes to 300, we'll say, hey, it's getting on its way to port. And then once it releases from port, we'll give you the vessel name. So you can track it on the computer. Right. And you can see, okay, so it left here. It'll probably go to what, Davisville. We'll go to Rhode Island, Rhode Island, Island. and then Jacksonville, Florida. So what does uh, so we're two fifty now? Mm -hmm. what's, what's, the the general, what's the general estimate now from here? Would be a month or two months or what do you think? So it's estimated to go into the body shop on the twenty sixth of this month. Okay. That's the next date. And that date could slot up a little bit. Um, it's supposed to be completed, estimated July seventeenth. And then, then so, so we're so from 250 to completion, you're a month, month and a half, generally speaking. Uh, and then it's what about four weeks or so for transit across the ocean to come to you guys, something like that, generally. Um, Once it's on the boat, you'll have a better sense of planning your trip and all that. You'll, you'll be able to have a more definitive once it hits the boat. And then, um, um, you know, the, the, the uh do we expect any any um you know pandemic delays or anything what have you guys been seeing right now from what we can tell you is no but if something changes that we can't foresee um we i always say i can guarantee everything except for active gods <laughs> so hurricanes um you know another big spike in pandemic um just crazy stuff could happen, but um, sure. we kind of know now where we're, we're looking because the car is starting to be built, which is good. We're not hearing anything bad coming out of Germany. Right. Um, mm -hmm. They've moved a lot of cars up. Your car moved up. Um, we had, what, probably a dozen cars get moved way up. Right. Um, and we're going to have a problem here coming into July, June and July um, of not having new cars because um, mm -hmm. they're only building customer build cars right now. Right. Hmm. They're done building just stock cars for the dealerships. Uh, I see. So that's probably why some of the custom cars have got the GT cars and stuff have moved up because right. they're, you know, they're, so even though they're, they're technically behind, there's probably, they're, they're, maybe they're factoring in less demand. And you know. some people's cars even got canceled and hmm. moved to 2021. Yeah. So hmm. we've, we've seen a little bit of both, but we feel pretty good now, right. now that we've gone through this and, um, and, you know, our dealership had a little problem in April with, with having to be shut down for a little bit, but we've been back at it ever since April 15th and it's been, uh, it's been very good for us. So we've been very busy, very fortunate. Now, what about, um, just for general purposes for customers? Um, so I, I put a very small deposit, I put $2,500 down. Um, you, you guys are bringing in a custom built car for me. Um, do you do that with all customers? I mean, how, how do people pay for these things? Like, I, you don't pay for it until it shows up. Is that always the way it goes? Well, it's kind of case by case basis. Um, and again, that's not discriminating versus one versus the other. It's it's more or less how wild is your build going to be? Mm. How resellable is that vehicle? Right. So, if something crazy were to happen to you and this car were to get here, we feel very confident we could we could make another customer out of this vehicle. Oh, yeah. But if you order a brand new 992 Turbo S from me and you make it a paint to sample in pink with purple <laughs> seats, right. mm. we're probably going to require payment up front um, right. because that could be something where <laughs> Act of God stuff right. happens to customer and that car shows up here and it might be the hottest car in the nation, but we don't know that until it gets here. Right. Um, and that's what's weird about Porsche is that you would think something might not sell and somebody is looking for that exact car. Mm -hmm in Alabama or Oklahoma or something crazy like that. Yeah. And then we'll see, um, uh, usually cars like I, like a car like this, I'd rather have my 125 grand. I get, I take, take heat for this often. 
It's like, you should never buy a car if you can't afford it. I'm like, well, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather have the 125 grand in the bank right. and, and I, or, or not even in the bank, but invested in inventory or some sort of appreciable asset make, you know, pay virtually no interest. I mean, low interest on these cars are very low, you know, two, right. three, four percent. And then, and then pay it however I darn well feel like it and you'll know, turn that money. And so, and then it, from a dealership perspective, uh, the, doesn't it also help you guys when people finance vehicles? Cause you can, you know, you get, you get a, you get some money back on the spread between, you know, what the bank lends to you and what you're able to, you know, convince me to buy it at. Um, Correct. That, that's always the miscommunication. You know, that everybody doesn't understand and think, oh, well, I pay cash to top your hand. Well, we, we'd always rather customer finance because the bank does pay us a, you know, a sure. small portion of that. You buy it at wholesale and then you, you sell it at retail. I mean, same thing with a car. You're buying the car at wholesale and you're selling right. it retail. And I think any smart, shrewd businessman knows that and is willing to pay that. And, uh, and that's part of, part of the deal. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably just, we'll probably just take out a loan on the thing and, um, and I'll you know, just, you know, pay it out of cash flow rather than, you know, taking the money out of the, out of the market or wherever the heck I have it at the time. I don't Let your cash keep making cash. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you came back and said, it's a 13% loan, you know, <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously we wouldn't, we wouldn't borrow the money. Um, right. So we'll kind of see. And some of the cars I own and some of them I do alone, it just depends on what the terms look like at the time. So, right. uh, and so, but, but generally speaking, you know, if, a, if it's a mark, if it's a car that's marketable for you, you guys will float the, the cost of the car. And when I show up to pick it up, that's when we do finish the deal and I pay the rest of the money, whether I finance it or write you a check or some combination of the, of the above. Correct. And over the course of the next, let's just say four to six weeks, we're going to have some more communication. We'll have you end up doing a credit application with sure. us. So it'll make it easier on me when I come up and on all of that. My plan always is for when my customers say yes to something, I get everything done. So when they walk in the door, they don't have to sit. They wait at my desk for 45, 50 minutes while the finance guy goes and does his thing. He might be eating lunch or something like that. We want you to walk in the door, be able to look at your car, say hi to me, walk into their office, right. sign your documents that you've got to sign, and then come out and let's spend the rest of the time doing the fun stuff with the car. Because that's what buying cars is all about is, is having a fun process. Nobody wants to be here four hours. So what my intent is to, I'm going to fly up there. And um, where do I fly into Charlotte? No, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, Our okay. is five minutes away from us, and we'll pick you up right you, there. You might oh. commit to Charlotte. But... Awesome. Yeah. Do you fly Delta or American? Usually Delta, yeah. Delta, you'll fly into Atlanta, and then you'll fly right here. It's it's a 45-minute flight out of Atlanta. Got it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm flying in. Um, you guys aren't going to mess with the car, right? It's going to have all the plastic on and all that stuff. They're going to PDI it. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, there's going to be very, very specific instructions. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> rubbing on my car, right? We don't rub uh, on it and jack it all up. I'm going to hang gonna out with the exactly how it comes off the truck. Right? Yeah. That's my leave, the, leave the dirt on it. I want to see the dirt. This is yeah. one of the things I, I tell a lot of um, a lot of the younger people that you know watch my videos that are getting their first car for the first time is that I promise I'll give you your five stars or whatever you need me to do. Um, if you just don't freaking like, I want to see all the dirt. Let me have all the dirt. And that just, uh, that means I know no one was rubbing on the darn thing. And then we're going to, we're going to kind of do a cleanup together and we'll uh, work with the young guys that prep the cars and we'll kind of make a video. Uh, and then I'm not even going to drive the car. We're going to put it on a truck and send it so that I can get PPF and all that stuff. Uh, and so I'm going to have the truck come and get the thing and then take it down to my buddy, Billy, and we're going to do PPF and then do the paint correction and all that stuff is the plan. So cool. but it's, it's going to be super fun. Uh, you know, who knows? We might have a couple hundred people come out and um, come visit us when we do the, when the car shows up. Let's do it. Fun. It'll be fun with us. Yeah, that'll be fun. So cool. Well, that's the process of uh, buying a car. You guys, you know, Porsche, you guys always make it so easy. You know, it's such a simple process. So much fun. I've wanted to do this, like this, this process of the, the choosing and, oh, do I do this? Do I do that? What color do I pick? The, the process of now I got to wait. Oh, what status is, is it? 260 to 300. Where is it at? Okay. It's on a boat. What boat is it on? Try to find that boat. You try to go and find the map of where it's at. And, you know, we try to try to kind of, kind of anticipate this whole thing. And, uh, that's to me, that's, that's part of the fun. 
Uh, and yeah, the nice thing about GT cars is you generally don't take as big of a depreciation hit as like if I bought an M5 or something like that, where it's going to lose 50. Yeah. 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 We know in the BMW world too. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> it's just, such the- a, it's, uh, I've been waiting for this with a GT car for a long time. And even though the GT4 is kind of like the stepsister to my beloved GT3 RS, it's, it's, it's a GT you know, car. it's a GT car. Yes. Yeah. I'm super, super excited. I'm so pleased. I'm happy that you guys are allowing me to do this. I know you're taking a chance on me, not violating you guys. And, and I, I know I'm not local and you guys very rarely do this, um, this kind of thing. But um, I like to think that I'm a little bit of an odd guy and then I can you know provide you guys some value by bringing awareness to the dealership and coming up and, and not, you know, and, 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 and hopefully doing a good job at showing you, how much I love the darn Porsche and uh, who knows, maybe you'll get me a GT3 or GT4 RS next. We'll see. <laughs> no, never know <laughs> with what's going on these days. We're, we're all about relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. This, this is the best part. Of it. That's, that's what life's all about. And cars kind of bring us together, you know, with a shared passion. So anyway, thank you guys for this. Uh, and um, we'll, uh, I guess our next GT4 video will be me in uh, North Carolina theoretically in july you know july something like maybe august yeah so maybe if, if we're planning it out right i, I mean it, it could be a very like a tail end of july i yeah. hope it tail end of july but uh you know i'll also take august so you know whatever works well and i don't have a job so i could literally if you told me the car was here i could literally go to the airport right now right uh, <laughs> on a plane and be there in you know four or five hours so right um, I don't have to worry about big planning and all of that. And I make an Instagram post, hey, I'm going to be there, and people will, that are local will come show up. And so um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm nimble. It doesn't really matter to me. So I can be there whenever you need me. Cool. Well, my freaking GT4 is there. I'm, I'm coming, coming <laughs> quick. <laughs> all right, we're, looking to it. Now, we're looking forward to it for sure. Awesome. Thank you guys. Appreciate no it. Thank you. Come here,